Welcome to EerieAlityTV.com. EerieAlityTV.com is Erie's reality TV program. Tune in to the city. You'll get hooked. So we have very erratic dinner times, but then we are all back home. Do well, we do TV, have a TV, but, but it's and it's broken and only has three channels. So is that your new widescreen high definition uh, deal yes. going on right there? Yes. The television is a one-eyed electronic brain sucker and it will uh, completely put you in the tractor beam and suck the life out of you and take all your time away. And I know this is a rather radical thing to say, but I am uh, a television addict. If there's a TV on in the room, if I come into somebody's home or I go into a restaurant or what have you and the TV's on, I am completely in the tractor beam, locked in, and you can ask my wife that. For English, we have to open up every class with a quote. For my turn, I chose this quote from Viktor Frankl. Frankl. Uh, everything can be taken from man except the last of the human freedoms, his ability to choose his own attitude at any given set of circumstances to choose his own way. Our oldest son Hans uh, often uh, remarks, he says, there's two kinds of uh, people in the world uh, that don't have TVs, the Amish and us. It's freed up so much time. Uh, we've really uh, been able to read a lot as the kids grow. And we've also, it's really enabled our kids to explore their talents. Max is outside in the pouring rain, uh, mostly in the dark, practicing his uh, set pieces in soccer, setting up the ball and, and kicking on the goal. And uh, he's just got a goal for himself to kick so many you know, shots in and practice and work on his touch. Like Hans, I think, would never be the magnificent uh, musician and singer that he is uh, if he would have had the opportunity to watch TV freely. Andy, the same way with him, uh, I think if he had um, TV on it, he, he would never have developed into the soccer player that he is. Who's your teacher? <laughs> okay, who's your principal? <laughs> we wanted to give our kids the best that we could possibly give them. And rather than to, um, you know, sublease that uh, opportunity to somebody else, we thought we could do a fairly good job of it. What I love about it is it, it fulfills homemaking. In a way, being a homemaker is a wonderful thing and it's rich, but homeschooling makes it all the more challenging and high highs and low lows, but it, um, I'm spending time with those kids that I love so much and we're, you know, we're in it together. Oftentimes people will say, you know, homeschool is you're just trying to remove your kids from the world and, and uh, you've got these shy, sheltered kids and I think that is so ridiculous. I, I remember seeing Hans, our oldest, at age 15, singing and playing guitar by himself in front of a group of 500 of his peers plus adults and playing flawlessly and I thought, there's a homeschooled kid. Now is he playing online somewhere else? Yes, this is an online game where over 10 million people are playing. There's an alliance side and a horde side. I'm the horde, which is pretty much the undead and the evil, so you can say the bad guys. I grew up with just my mom, my dad was never home, was in jail for the most part. So you choose your side, so to speak, you choose to be with the Horde? Yes. What attracts you to the Horde? Why the Horde? Uh, pretty much the undead, the racial abilities. The last time I met my dad was when he got out of prison. And I lived with him for a couple months and I seen what a prison can do to somebody.
People call it hell because it strips you of every emotion possible and leaves you sad, depressed, with no hope. I mean, every day it's, you know, somebody will tell you something and it's just disbelief because you have no trust. Well, the Alliance, everything is all nice and good and horrid, everything's undead and rotting away. And, you know, I always wanted my dad to get out and me and him spend time and make up from when he wasn't there. And when he got out and he was pretty much a formal shell of himself, I, you know, I couldn't, it really hurt a lot. You know, it squashed a lot of the hope and goals that I had growing up. I pretty much play this game all day, every day, unless I'm at band practice, about 12 to 18 hours a day. Especially, I mean, one thing I don't like about today's society is video games are put down. You know, a lot of parents don't like World of Warcraft because it's so addicting, but the way I see it, I'd rather have my children playing this game all day than out on the streets getting in trouble or getting shot or killed or raped. Yeah, this character is mine and this is my buddy. Okay, what's your goal? What's your mission? Uh, to get to the max level, which is level 70. What are you going to do to do that? Kill a lot and do quests. I think love is violent. <laughs> I really do. I think love is another way of forcing somebody to think a certain way. Love makes you cry, you know, if you and somebody split up or memories. I've gone through some bad relationships and three of those I've had kids with. I've gotten jobs and it's just, you know, the most I could do was either plastic shops or, or kitchen jobs and, you know, I wanted more to life than that. I have ADHD so, you know, if, I, if I'm not really, if I'm not interested in it, then I want to say I can't do it, but I have a very hard, very hard time. And once, the, you know, I went and seen a state doctor and they said because of my mental disabilities that I should be receiving SSI and I should not be working anymore. So here I am. We're pretty much all Christians here. I mean, we all call ourselves Juggalos and Juggalettes. We follow a band called ICP and St. Cloud and Posse a lot. And, you know, most people don't get it that they're actually very big on God. What really got me attached to music is how beautiful music can actually be no matter how it's put. If I, if I had one wish to change anything, it would probably be just to pick up that instrument and try harder. You know, I want to see myself succeed. I want to see myself actually go through with this and finish something. And, you know, I've been in and out of a couple of bands here and there that didn't work, and I'm glad that I'm with one, and I'm really hoping we last. This room is basically our, Chris actually gave me this room when I we got married and moved in. It's a very comfortable room. I love this room. And uh, she let, allowed me to put, put my trophies and things from the past of uh, contests and stuff that I've, I've placed in. Roy's brother, Essie, played for Strong Vincent. And he was an outstanding basketball player. And he got a full scholarship to St. Bonaventure. And he took the basketball team to the end my NIT tournament. NIT, yeah. And they won first place. And then he went and he played for the D Detroit Pistons. And then he went overseas and played ball for quite a few years. And he was like the Michael Jordan of Spain. The, the guys, you know, he was taller than everybody, but uh, they used to make fun of him because he couldn't play, okay? And uh, I used to go down to, uh, down to the park and, and uh, play. But uh, I guess one time he, uh, he finally got, got tired of them talking about him. And what he did is, he would go out every night, uh, every day during the summertime, you know, during the night by himself, take his basketball, uh, go down there and play. And he'd play for hours, um, sometimes we hours in the morning, just playing by himself and working on his game. And it was like a total turnaround. The following year, it's like the guys, they didn't know who he was. And all he wanted to do is prove to them that he, he wasn't a clod anymore. And he went out and played and just started just tearing everyone up. Back then, when, when uh, you know, people, people called me all kind of racial names, but also even my friends used to make fun of me and stuff. So it was like bad. And it's, this is the truth. When I, I used to hate even looking at myself in the mirror, cause I used to just, I just hate my, they make me hate me. So uh, I, I didn't want to participate in things because I didn't believe in myself. But when the older I got, and I think that's also where it came from watching Essie. I, I just realized that, you know, what, what I have to do, I have to do this thing 
to, to the best of my ability. My brother, he taught me to be uh, kind to of people. He taught me to, to, to be patient. And he, he also taught me to for, forgive. It was, it was amazing. So he, he's taught me kindness and he taught me to just um, uh, uh, always humble yourself. You know, he, he always said, there's always someone better. If you start getting big headed and, and believing you're better than, better than people on things, that's when you, you stop growing. But if you stay humble, you can learn from a child, you can learn from anyone. Roy likes to, he doesn't like to let anything defeat him. And so just like how Essie did not let these people tell him he couldn't play basketball and he was a clod, Essie practiced and practiced and practiced just to prove to himself that he could do it. And Roy, you're kind of like that too. When I was little, people, people thought I was mute. They, they thought I couldn't speak because every word that came out of my mouth, it was, I stuttered on. I learned that when I sing, I didn't stutter. So, like I found found my place, and it it, be, it, came, it gave me confidence and everything. So, even when I, even in high school uh, course and everything had leading parts. I write the songs that make the whole world sing. I write the songs of love and special things. I grew up in a small town, and I think there may have been two African Americans in my whole high school falling in love with Roy. Sometimes I have to sit back and say, wow, he is really dark. You know, he, he's black and I'm not. And it, it's just the most natural thing in the world that we don't even look at the interracial, you know, part of our relationship. It's like our spirits and the love that we feel for each other. But there would always be something about when Roy sings and the feeling that people get that all of those change, you know, prejudice away. just yeah, kind of fell, fell apart. And you'd walk into a place and by the end of the evening, everybody would be your best friend. Mm -hmm. You know, that's kind of, an, mm -hmm. kind of a neat thing. And that's only through God. I mean, that's, that's just, just only, the gift that God. God, that God gave. Charles was Robin, I was Batman, so we used to always uh, be like a, a team like that. A couple of days after the chemo, he kind of crashes. So we're just trying to figure out the logistics of, you know, of his treatment. When I first met her, she was working on a corner, so we cleaned her out. You're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Actually, I met her when she was 15 at the mall, and she was with her friend Carla, and I guess she had the biggest crush on me. Yeah, I gave him my phone number and we talked. We yeah. lost contact and then a few years later he was in jail with Carla's boyfriend. And I saw this lovely young woman running around campus one Sunday afternoon as I was heading to the library to study and I just happened to have my bike in the back of my car and I, uh, I you know, on an impulse I pulled my bike out of the back of my car, popped the front wheel on and pedaled up alongside her and 